Hey everybody, this is DM Mike, and this is the next map in the Tabletop Simulator series that I'm doing on Horde of the Dragon Queen. As I build these maps, I kind of go back and um, make a quick video of them. Uh, this is the third encounter in the Swamp Encounter uh, map or uh, swamp encounter route that I had the characters take. I'll put a quick graphic up that shows the two routes my characters could have taken to get to the castle in the swamp. They chose the second route, obviously, and there were three major encounters. Uh, they they went through the first one, which was the giant mosquitoes. They skipped the second one, but you can still see that map on the channel. And this is the third one. This is the undead fog. Um, so this is where they're at. This is actually where we're currently at in the campaign. Now, a lot happened here. You can watch the campaign diary, the most recent one that covers all the little things that happened here. But this is how we set up the boats. We have Pax and Storm. Snapjaw uh, kind of came with them. Frulam, long story, but there she is. Uh, Thimbraeus and their pixie Anodyne, uh, Althea and Mortimer were all here. This is how they kind of set up the boats uh, when, when they set off from Snapjaw's camp. Now let's kind of zoom down just a little bit here. You can see out in the distance there's a heavy fog. Um, surprisingly did not slow down uh, the map too much or the frame rates. But um, you can see this heavy fog. I actually put a little fog way up at the top as well. And out here in the distance are all the zombies who are kind of reluctantly being pushed forward by this undead fog. It's actually bringing them back to life. Um, and they're kind of wandering around. Now, at first I had actual 3D tokens, but, you know, I'm sorry, just flat base tokens like this with numbers on them are far easier to call out than trying to highlight the token, like the 3D model, and get the little um, blurb to show up at the bottom of it, the base of it, to see what number it is, especially if you're, like me, the DM, trying to find, okay, where's number six, and I have to go through each model to try to find number six. It, it was really slowing it down, so I've kind of went away from the models. But here you are. You can see all the different zombies. We have two huge ogre zombies here. Um, quite a few distance away from each other. And I kept the aesthetics of the swamp um, uh, similar to the other maps, uh, but put a lot more trees in, mainly because there was an ambush going to happen here. Uh, but you can see the aesthetics are still there. A little bit different looking, especially with the heavy fog use, uh, but still a swamp, right? It still feels like they're in the swamp and not much has changed. You want to keep some of those aesthetics. But I put a lot more like swamp trees in here to make it look a little bit different. Um, you've got some like, let's zoom in just just a bit here. Whoa, okay, that's good. Uh, like collapsed boats over here, like somebody had tried to make the journey. Here's some debris. Uh, here's another boat over here. Somebody has tried this route at some point. Uh, those are just little touches here and there, just um, detail touches. But anyway, this is how they did it. Um, this is the, the map they encountered, and they had to kind of weave the boats through all this, through the trees, through the fires, um, and through the zombies that were moving every at the end of every round or every few minutes, I would just slowly kind of move these zombies up and they were kind of meandering, going all over the place. Um, and they had tied the boats together too. So the boats were kind of moving as one as we did this. But as you can see, I kind of spread out the zombies. One reason for that was to create, uh, you know, kind of a route that they could possibly take. You know, they, they needed to have room for the boats to go through, right? And of course, that that these gaps would change as the zombies were moving forward. So sometimes that would force them, instead of going maybe this way, uh, they could go this way, or someone can come around this way and either go through there or go through here. But there was always something kind of in the way, right? So we have debris here, debris here, and debris here. There was always something that was kind of just a little bit of a difficult problem. So what that uh, allowed me to do was create skill checks. They had to, you know, steering the boat, um, getting it past certain obstacles, flame, uh, all that kind of stuff. But this is where uh, they encountered uh, these zombies and also where the um, ambush happened between the Dark Elves, who we had one Dark Elf way up here on the pillar and then one here in this tree. I think the... Uh, Okay, well, there it is, actually up in there. And then we had another one back here, and this is actually where Frulam almost was hanged uh, by one of the drow as they were passing under this tree. But this is it, guys. This is the encounter map. Um, for that last encounter before they get to the castle, they're still in this. We're going to wrap this up, I think, not this Friday, but next. And uh, I don't, I'm not sure what's going to happen. No clue, but this was a fun one to do because really they have not fought many of the zombies whatsoever. It's been more about the first, like, let's just zoom out here. The first, like, 50% of this map, let's say from there to there, was um, really a skill checks. And, you know, they used a lot of passive uh, abilities. They used a lot of... Um, 
abilities that I haven't seen in a long time, like Pass Without Trace, and then of course the thief using Thaumaturgy to make these zombies hear something and maybe move off to left or to the right uh, to get out of their way. You know, it was, it was a lot of cool stuff that was used that evening. But um, so guys, this is it. I don't want to spend too much time on this, but this is the swamp map. It's route number three. And um, again, all these models you see here on this map can be found on the workshop. There's a lot of great models on there you can use to bring all these maps to life. So anyway, guys, hope this is uh, entertaining somewhat and it gives you ideas for what you can do in the swamp and gives you kind of an idea of the aesthetics, different ambient things you can do and visual effects to help bring the swamp to life um, and be fun to use, right? All right, guys, that's it. That's all I got. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.